You feel about this younger generation of hip hop like I feel about this young generation of players? Man, I feel that actually, you know, what they've done with music is equivalent to if they were to open up the doors of the arena and say, anybody think you can play basketball, come on in. Come on out the stands down here to the floor. He go your jersey, man. Get in the game. I just don't like that they don't respect people like us who paved the way for. I'm talking both I'm about these NBA players. I'm talking about these young rappers. What is up? What is good? How you living? How you feeling? How you doing? It is the big podcast with Shaq where we always do it. Oh, what's my line? Big. Oh, big. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, my bad. He doesn't remember because he's remembering the good old days when he used to run the neighborhoods of Atlanta. This outfit right here, man. Unbelievable. You know what? I got this outfit from this clip right here. Uh, A guy tried to hug his grandfather and this is what the grandfather said. Give me a hug, man. Oh, man, give me a wig here because I brought you some damn. You are crazy as hell. I can't get a hug. Don't be hugging on no player. You can't put that on the internet or boss in like me hugging on a something. What's wrong with you, boy? You're my granddaddy, man. I can't help it, boy. You better act like you got them real. Dude. I got you. No more something running out, family. You're going to put it on that. Hey, big song. You ain't hugging on that granddaddy like he a little boy. You better boss up, Hey man, I'm family like this outfit or no? No, my daughter. My daughter says I look like an old school pimp, and uh, my cousin Kenny said, "Well, that's what your father is." <laughs> um, before he gets here, when you think of Ti, what comes to mind? The King. That's what I think too. A guy that we're we're similar in our ways. You are too. We take what we want. We don't take no prisoners. Like I, I've been a fan of his for a long time and started off as T.I. and Tip and he said he's the king of the South and a couple of people tried to challenge him. It was a couple of battles back and forth. It was all good. It's just, he's always been very, very hospitable to me. So, you know, I've always, I've always had a good rapport with, with rappers because for me, hip hop and rap all come from the same place. Like I always tell a story, me on the way to the court, I was LL Cool J. I had the flea market rope chain. I had the cane gold that I'm wearing now. You know, I had the slang and that. And then when I get to the court, I was Dr. J. Mm. But, you know, like like when I stepped on the scene doing rap, people thought I'd just start a rapper. No, I've been doing, doing rap as, as, as long as I've been playing basketball. Born and raised in Atlanta, Georgia, the man is worldwide. From rubber band man to three-time Grammy winner, actor, musician, businessman, comedian, a lifelong star that has stacks taller than Shaq now, a true king. Give it up for Tip, everybody. Hey. Man, that's all right. Made me feel like I was coming out the tunnel. Hey. Yeah. (laughs) I'm going to ask you a question like people ask me. Go ahead. You feel about this younger generation of hip hop like I feel about this young generation of players? Um, I mean, man, I feel like this generation reminds me of every other generation. You got some people who are exceptionally dope and you got some people who just all right. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it, it's a lot more of it to choose from now. Uh, Too much. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I feel There's so that. many rappers now, bro. Man, I feel that actually, you know, what they've done with music is equivalent to if they were to open up the doors of the arena and say, anybody think you can play basketball, come on in. Mm. You know what I mean? Anybody, man, come on. Anybody, just come on, man. Yeah, just come on, come on. Yeah. Come on out the stands down here to the floor. He go your jersey, man. Get in the game. I just don't like that they don't respect people like us who paved the way for. Mm. That's the only thing I don't like. About, you talking about music, you talking about- I'm talking about both. Uh. About these NBA players, I'm talking about these young rappers. For real? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't like that. Cause, cause <sighs> when I played, right, 
if, and for example, when I spit, uh -huh. I'm thinking about y'all. I'm thinking about if y'all like it, if y'all accept it. Not, I'm going I'm, I'm to just do my own. Like, I'm right. thinking about that. When I played, we're going to like this move. Right. Matt, you know what I'm saying? Like, these, these cats, no, they just do. And then they think going viral is, 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 is what makes them, you know, equal status to what me and you are doing. Well, see, the thing is, what happened is that was what we call a paradigm shift in the industry. And that's like it went from a, a um, like it went to a direct to consumer industry. So which means you don't need a distributor. You don't need, you know, you don't have to go through uh Tower uh, Records. Best Buy, a right. Target, uh, you know, Blockbuster, if you're that old. You ain't, got, you ain't got to do that. You can go straight to a consumer, and the consumer more than likely wants to hear something that reminds them of themselves. Mm. Sometimes too much talent intimidates the consumer. Because right. I can't achieve this. I'm not going to work as hard as it takes to sound like this. This is just, it's a, it's, you know what, I'm, it's overwhelming. I'd rather hear something that sounds like me or my friends. It sounds like something I can walk outside and see. It seems like to me it went from before to be popular, you must be good, mm -hmm. to now if you are popular, you must be good. And I think the similarity between basketball and music is they both got really short. Now mm. we have... 10 seconds of a song on TikTok, and now it's on the Billboard Top 100. Yeah, and in good. basketball, it's why would I watch an entire game when I can watch the highlights, the number, the best play on House of Highlights. Yeah, and so cool. our attention span got shorter, yeah. and the distribution got completely. It's actually very similar to each other. So, are you done? I will, be soon. You got? I will be soon, you know. Uh, One, two more. Yeah, I'm gonna do two more projects. And then I hang it up. Um, I mean, to be honest with you, I mean, I, I pretty much I've, I've said I've said just about it. I'll live. Now there's a hold on, but there's a change. So Andre three thousand put out a flute album. <laughs> uh, Lil John, I don't know if you saw this. Yeah, he's putting out a guided meditation album. Okay. okay. Your last album doesn't have to be rap. Yes, it does. It well, could be. How about this? You could do. Don't do that. Stand up comedy album. Don't do that. Well, listen, oh, yeah, that, that was cool, okay. but yeah. But this don't. is what I'm saying. It's my last album, you know, as a solo uh, uh, hip-hop, like a rapper. You yeah. feel me? If, 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 let's say, hypothetically speaking, if me and... Uh, Yo-Yo Ma have a cello album? Uh, something like that, no, perhaps. Okay, sorry. You know, uh, uh, like if there's a group project, like the PSC, we're going to put well, out... You white people are always trying to water down. That's Tip, we ain't doing no. So, hey, I mean, really before you tip came ain't doing here, no. I was half flute black. Album. And I now I'm just a white guy watering do. down. I have shit. no interest in playing the flute, but if no I just flute album with If tip. I learn to play the piano, and I, you know, what I'm saying, and I'm confident enough yeah. to put out a classical piano a harp album. No. These I are mean, all possible. Hey man, why you imagine? Why, why yeah. we're running wild with our imagination? Yeah. You know, why not a violin? You know what I'm That's saying? That's what I'm saying. Why not? If he came on stage in a spotlight and he was like, just for shits and giggles. Hey, not, no, man. you know what's gonna happen? He's gonna do that. Yeah. Then he's gonna have some drums behind that bit. Then, then yeah, well, yeah, there you go. Now we're yeah, building exactly. an album. Yeah. There you go. So I, I need you to teach me something. Streams and selling to me, like, what's the difference? So oh, okay. Before you answer, because I, I saw you in the car wash and I told you your last album was dope. Man, thank you. No, thank it was a hit. Thank you. Hit, what's that song? Hit, hit dogs holler. Yeah, that's my joint. Man, like that. So I thought it was dope, but I, I don't, I don't understand streams and going platinum. So like, what? Well, okay. So when the when the paradigm shift happened, um, basically, they 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 equate a certain amount of streams is calculated for an album sale. Uh, I don't know the formula. Somebody can Google it. It's uh, a lot of f streams. Sixteen hundred. 1,600 streams equals one album sales. So I would have to go, so, damn, that's a lot. Platinum. I think 1.6 billion, right, is platinum. Oh, God. Well, I ain't never going platinum again then, huh? <laughs> God, damn. You got to hire some of those phones and warehouses. I mean, damn. but you know, but nah, but, but, but the thing is, it's, a, it's all about, it's an algorithm now. I feel like, you know, it went from the, the, the artist 
having, you know, the um, the credit being given to the artist and now the credit is given to the technology. Mm. You know what I mean? Because the technology tells you what to listen to next. The technology, right. you know, you, you instead of paying for an album, you pay for a subscription. To, that will yeah. allow you to have all of these. Did you like that art. one song? What about these songs exactly. that are just like it? Yeah, yes. that's a good point. Yeah, so I think that when the paradigm shift happened, it went from you know paying for for the the the, prod, the product of an artist to paying for the product of technology, which will offer you all of these artists. So when you ride in your car, you you go old school or new school? Man, bro, I go. Dead silent. What? Most of the time I go. You dead just sit silent. there in silence? Yeah. I just, oh, you ain't got no boom boom in your car? It might, it's in there, but I don't hardly. <laughs> like, it's, usually when I'm listening to music, I'm listening to something that I just did in the studio just to make right. sure it's right, or I'm listening to something Demani or King, like, you know what I mean? Right. Uh, I very rare, because my phone is always ringing. Right. So while I'm listening to music, it's always being interrupted, which is another thing I hate. You know what I mean? We have to listen to music through our phones. And the phone is always, whether it's like, you know, I was trying to listen to something on the way here. And the GPS kept, turn, right. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it, it, it kind of interrupts the experience. So I just go dead silent, talk on the phone. and I'm old school. I love old school. Which now, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, what is old I school old? to you? So. Let's judge and, this. And, and then. I'm excited. I have categories. Okay. So old school Atlanta, you. Okay. Oh, I'm old school now. Hell Damn, yeah. No. Damn. Yeah, no, you. Damn. You. Outcast. Okay. Luda. Like everything, Jermaine Dupri, like, right? And then I go Houston. I got a Houston place. UGK. Got a, UGK and them. Or yeah, Scarface, Scarface. Of course. Get I got a West Coast. Okay. And then I got a East Coast, Wu Tang, like, you know, Tribe Called Quest. Like, I don't. See, I wasn't sure if old school was like James Brown. Yeah, I would think of James Earth Brown, Asley Fire. Brothers, you know yeah. what I mean? No, Gap I, don't, Band. I don't go that You don't listen to that at all? No. Stevie no. Wonder. No. That's, That's how I, 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 go, I, go, I go that old. That's what Marvin Gaye. Yeah, no, no, I don't go that old. 90s R&B, Mary oh. J. Blige, Escape. Can we talk? No, no, no. All right, let's not do that one. My bad. Yeah. Yeah. Do that one. Yeah. I'll yeah. work yeah. on the vocals. Yeah. 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 Now what we're not gonna do? Now yeah. what we're not gonna do? You hear me? <laughs> I, I wanted to ask. Yeah, sing some Barry Manilow, man. Some Frank Sinatra, yeah. something like that, man. We ain't go. I, I do. We're not going. We're not going. We're not going. Nah, we're not going to do the spirituals this way. Now you hear me? I wanted to ask both of you guys this, and I think you did it to him without even realizing it. Is it? Do you enjoy it, or is an insult to be called a legend at this point? Oh, I mean, it's. I mean, it's a, it's a clear observation of fact, I believe. Beautiful. That was beautiful. <laughs> it is. But there's this notion now, so my friend Soleil says all the time, everyone these days is calling each other the goat. And everyone these days, that it kind of waters it down a little bit. Well, because true. I believe you've earned legend status. Thank you. But, but the, now I think some people just kind of throw it out all the time. Well, see, see, the difference is, is legend, goat, and, you know, okay, first of all, What's more, what's most important is how you feel about yourself no first. Doubt, no you doubt. hear me? So if you feel, if you truly are sincere about how you feel about yourself, it, it will be conveyed to everybody else. Gotcha. And when you say GOAT, GOAT is greatest of all time. Greatest of all time at what? You hear me? Mm -hmm. Now, Shaq said he's the greatest of all time. He has stat statistics to yes. prove this. An accomplishment. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, so when you say you're the GOAT, the GOAT of what? Mm. You know what I mean? And then not only that, it's just a matter of opinion. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. It's, it's eight billion it's just, people on all, The reason I was asking, too, from that perspective is there's an age thing with legend. I got, and I had to start accepting it. And the only reason why I accepted it is I'm 50. A lot of people call me OG now. <laughs> How does that feel? Like at first I didn't accept it, but bro, fifty. Fifty-two. Same thing. Same thing. <laughs> I said earlier before you came here, you remind me of myself. Man. You don't take no for an answer. And, and when you say some it happens. I was saying that when you first came out, everybody was a fan. You was T I'd and you was tip. And then you just said, I'm the king of the South. And nobody better not say nothing about it. How did you come up with that? And I know, I'm, I'm not going to ask you, do you really believe you're the king of the South, but what gave you that menta mentality to say, all 
that's here. Mm. I respect y'all, but I'm the king of the South. I mean, because you, you was the first one to say it. Yeah, I mean, you know what? To be honest with you, um, that 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 came. I was actually on the way to the studio to record uh, probably one of the first features, um, uh, one of the first collaborations on the main uh, a major project, which was the sh not Shaft, the Shaft soundtrack. Mm. Oh, man, excuse me, pardon me. Uh, the Shaft soundtrack with Beanie Siegel. Uh, it was a song called Two Glock Nines. Uh, the sample, of, we, they sampled uh, Biggie's uh, Two Glock Nine. Any whisper in the back, right, man. Right, right. All right. And, and so me and KP, we were on the way from, I believe, Lenox Mall to the studio. And when we were riding, we were listening to uh, Mystical's album. Uh, and Mystical, uh, he 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 had a moniker. His was Prince of the South, mm. and and I was uh, riding with KP, and I was listening. I, I cut the radio down. I said, "Hey, so if Mystical is the Prince of the South, who's the King?" And we both just had a moment of silence. I looked at the window, then we looked at each other. He said, "You wouldn't." I said, "Like hell, I won't." And when we went to the studio, uh, I said, "King of the South" on that record. Um, but to be honest with you, to answer the second part of that question, um, how I, I, if I, I never believed it as much until people started saying that I couldn't say it. You know what I mean? When people started to challenge me and say, you can't say that. I'm like, man, you can't tell me what, what to say for myself, what, what to think of myself. Um, and another thing people don't know is that I actually, you know, I actually got the blessings of of my predecessors, the people who I considered the OGs who who paved the way for me, Big Dre, um, all the Goody Mob, um, uh, Bun B, Pimp C, Eight Ball, MJ, you know what I mean? Like I actually went around and asked Scarface. I asked the people that I looked up to and that I respected uh, how they felt about it, and everybody kind of. I mean, I think it was because, you know, they kind of respected my, you know, just how, you know, just the fact that I could actually, you know, I could go. You know what I mean? You can go. Um, and I got the, I got everybody's blessings. Now, people in my generation, they didn't like it so much, but I didn't care. I wanted because he talks a lot about how he didn't care about the earthlings, but if Kareem said something, right. that mattered. Exactly. Who, who was it for you that gave that stamp to you that went, all of those people, uh, Scarface. Was there a moment that you remember when he looked at you and was like, you're different? Andre 3000, big boy. I mean, man, you know, just like I can't remember when Shaq and I met, I can't, I can't hardly remember when I met Face. You know, uh -huh. I do remember when I met Big and Dre. I do remember when I met Goody Mob. Uh, but like, you know, like, like Bun B, Scarface, it just feels like we've known, I've known them forever. Oh, life. Uh, maybe because I just grew up just kind of listening and listening, just consuming myself with their art, you know what I mean? So I was already so familiar with them yeah. that I only remember, you know, when we met for the first time. I need your help. What's that? We got the same problem. What's that? How do we how do we raise these sport kids differently? Oof. Like, mm. did you talk back to your parents? Nah, man. My kids talking back to me, I don't know what to do. Nah, I mean, I need your help too, cause I got a two month old and his name's Prince. Uh, well, you know, so we have so, some royalty names. But you know what? I I actually kind of like it though, cause my daughter very shy and timid. Now she's coming to herself. Right. We had a little go this morning, but I actually felt good about it. So you know, the thing is, I feel like when kids are um, when kids are are when they challenge their parents, you know, I think that's that's getting them ready for challenging the world. You know what I mean? Because the universe for, for a kid begins at home with their yeah. parents, you know what I mean? And if they can't find their voice with their mom, their dad, or whoever the authority is in the house, when they get out there in the world, they won't be able to find their voice or assert themselves then, you know what I mean? Um, now, you know, some kids have a, have a little too much practice, like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, uh, uh, but I think that, you know, that that, that is kind of like the, the first sightings of leadership, you know what I mean? Uh, that's kind of them showing that, you know, I don't want to follow 
the pack. I don't want to just go with the flow. Right. I want to make my own way, swim upstream. I want to find my own way and create my own, uh, my own journey, my own path, I should say. And um, so, I mean, with the right guidance, you know, with, with the proper amount of lessons, and, and I, I, we got to teach our children that to be a great leader, you must be a great follower at some point. You know what I mean? Because uh, I'm kind of from the old school. Like, you know, one of my yeah. sons bucked up one day and I had to take my glass off and be like, you know, like I had to look at him and be like, yeah. all right. Yeah, I got it with him, man. <laughs> I got it with him for crying about my with him, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> remember, hey, remember that? Be quiet. Yeah, I give Stop you something sniffling. to cry about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fix your face. Yeah, yeah I, yeah, I mean, but, um, bro, I think that that has to happen probably once. You know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe once. And once it happens one time, I think there's a a, a, a mutual respect mm. you did. Because you got to kind of respect him for even coming to the point where he can overcome whatever fear that he may have had to even think that. Mm. You, to accept that whooping that he probably knows he's going to receive. Right. You know, to, to, you know what I'm saying, to, to stand up for itself or stand on business, as mine, <laughs> as mine yeah. would say. <laughs> Yeah, but my you know, boy right there, King. Speaking about uh, follow your own path, Damani. Yeah, flows a little different from yours. Yeah, and I saw one of his songs where he said he didn't want to be like you, but his his game is not like. Has he has he come to you for tips? No, no, no. I mean, it, on business, but not on his not on his craft, not on his art. He'll let me hear his records. He'll let me in just to see what I say, uh, but he never comes to me and can, like asks. He just like lets he me. He got sort of like that East Coast flow. Like his is real, real, really smooth. Strange thing, right? So anybody could go and research this. Um, when Damani first started rapping, he was a kid. Uh, and his first record was called Green Faces. And all he rapped about was having money and, you know, going to the mall and buying everybody ice cream from the ice cream truck. And I said, man, you're going to get beat up. You know, these kids, <laughs> man, these kids, you talking about everything that other people around you can't experience. That's not, that's not going to be good for you. You need to find ways to relate to people. Mm. You need to dig deeper. You know what I mean? And I asked him what he was listening to. And he was like, soldier boy. I said, all right, listen. Um, <laughs> no disrespect to Soldier, you know what I'm saying? Big Soldier, he got hits, but I mean, but 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 I feel like Soldier Boy was respected for what he was saying because he didn't come from a, a, a famous household. You feel what I'm saying? If you came from a famous household and you, the, the talking about that kind of stuff, you got it too easy. You know what I mean? So I sent him to listen to some Big and, and you know some Park and. UGK, Outkast, Goody Mob, you know what I mean? And uh, later on, you know, he, he came, he said, uh, have you ever heard of this this group called A Tribe Called Quest? I said, have I ever, man, come on, man. <laughs> yeah. He think he turning me on to something now. Yeah. Uh, but but he, he just, uh, he kind of enhanced his palate. And I think that, that, that contributed to a lot of his uh, diversity when it comes to his skill set. Mm. Diversity of skill set, art. I know his favorite actor of all time is Denzel. Okay. American Gangster. Yeah. Being on set, experiencing that. I know that if they asked him who's the number one guest you'd want for this podcast. I know he would say Denzel Washington. Right. What what was nope. that like? What can we, you share with us on Rihanna. That? <laughs> number two behind Rihanna. Yeah. Uh man, to be honest, man, Denzel. Uh, ODW, he cool, he real cool, laid back, and you know he just reminds you of the the elder statesmen in the community, kinda. You know what I'm saying? Like the, you know, the guys who you you who overlook all of the activities in the neighborhood and keep everything, yeah. you know, running fairly. You know what I mean? Right. Like a real Man, um, just a, a, a chief, you know what I mean? You know, uh, and and I remember, so one of our first interactions 
we're I'm preparing for the scene that we're about to do, and I'm pacing back and forth, you know, going over my lines and whatnot. I'm walking back and forth, and um, I remember Denzel. He was just like standing there. He could have been smoking or just chilling, and uh, he he he. I didn't notice, but I guess he was observing me, you know, just kind of pacing. And he said, hey, Yusta, what's up? You nervous? <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, yeah, yeah you know, kind of, just making sure I got my together, so I, so I, so I don't this up. He said, hey, look, he said they could have had anybody to do this. They could have called anybody to come here and do this, right? I said, yeah. He said, they called you, didn't they? I said, yeah. He said, do you know why they called you? I said, yeah. He said, well, goddamn it, go in there and do that. You ain't going to have to worry about a goddamn thing. You got no reason to be nervous. Mm. And, you know, then we went in there and we did the scene. You know what I mean? Uh, but that was some of the best advice. And then, you know, it kind of took the pressure away. You yeah. feel me? Yeah. Well, when someone like that says, you have it. Yeah. What else do you even need at that point? I mean, you need to you need you need to do the scene. Other right. than doing, yeah. <laughs> and you need to execute. And what know? do you think my favorite movies of yours is? What do I think? Yeah, man, I would. I'm gonna give you a hint. Some gangster. Take us. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that was my well, yes, sir. Yes, sir. That, that was my. It was either. It was yeah. either. It, I, I think it was take us. that or ATL, but yeah, take us. Yeah, ATL was nice, but yeah, take us. Yeah. So, so how'd you even get an acting? Like, was it was it by accident or like? Man, nah, not actor? not at all. I mean, you know, looking at, you know, the the predecessors, the people who I had as 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 role models, uh, LL Cool J, Ice Cube, Tupac. You know, I always knew Ice T. I always knew, like, you know, if I do the music right, the natural evolution would be to go into acting. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So it was always on 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 my on my to do list. Um, the opportunity didn't come. So I so first I tried that. My first movie, my first audition um, was for Drumline. Yeah. Um, Tell me it was Nick Cannon's role. Yeah, somebody named Nick Cannon got the yeah. boy, man. <laughs> <laughs> but uh I, I I knew I knew and he did a phenomenal job. He actually yeah. yeah, he actually learned how to play the drum. Appreciate that. He actually learned how to play the drums, which I you know, I, I wasn't gonna do. You no. know what I mean? My first uh, job was uh like I I would always, like you said, you talk about the predecessor, I would always say I wish I could do a movie, so I'm in Beverly Hills one day. I say, man, we want you to do this movie, Blue Chip. Like, I'm not a good actor. Two million. I'll do it. <laughs> I'll do it. And that was the first movie. It was cool. It's like, man, we want you to shoot this shit because I am Genie in the Boombox. Man, I ain't doing that. Seven million. I'll do it. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> I've got, I've, so I, I have 14 movies, but my, my boy is always saying, they're not really movies because 12 of them, you play Shaq. Mm. Damn. So, I mean, but I've been, you know, blessed enough to do 14 movies. That's the Cat Williams thing. Hey, how you been, man? Good, bro. You? I'm chilling, man. I can't I, complain. I mean, Hold you on, dog. I know you ain't wearing no corduroys. Man, I had a Still meeting. Still wearing corduroys? Yeah, you talking about a, a Kango and Pippin? What you mean? <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about. <laughs> My bad, big dog. You, Come on. My bad, big dog. Yeah, I know. I remember when you first came home and we had a game. Mm. You was in the back of the Maybach, smiling, you was out, you came straight to the Hawk game. Yep. Yeah. Hey man, you, hey man, I went, man the Hawks, man, that high in the head, you, so you played on the Hawks twice, right? Two years, I played once for two years. You played once for two years. Yeah. I'm smooth with everybody. How every team in Atlanta just get rid of the best players, I don't understand it. Man. Every team. And they got everything, culture, everything, like you know. If you could own, uh, NFL, NBA team, which one would it be? You mean either or? Either or. It'll probably be NBA. Or the Hawks. Yes. But the thing is, though, you know, and I'm always asked this because, you know, so many of my uh, contemporaries, you know, like Nelly, he got, you know, a piece of uh, Charlotte, uh, and, and Usher got a piece of Cleveland. And, you know, people be asking, you know, would I ever do it? And I don't think I would, you know, because... I just can't see me taking so much of my money, invested it in something, and I can't do what the f 
I want to do with it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I just right. can't imagine that. Right. I just can't imagine that. You know, if I, I'm going to put my money in something where I can dictate and determine the way it's going to go. Did you really get upset when they did the Falcon song and they didn't even call you? I got upset when they did the Falcon song and they didn't call nobody. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Nobody. Like, you know what I mean? You ain't tell me you ain't think to call nobody. And we had, but they made it up. They made yeah. it up to us. You know, they did a, a, a big uh, 50 years of hip hop thing where they had all the Atlanta performers, past, present, and future. You know what I'm saying? They, we all came out and rock did our thing. So, you know, they, they got the memo. They, you know, because the, the correction is much better than, than the kerfuffle. So rappers and athletes are alike. So I always wanted to ask a rapper this question. How do you handle beef without going overboard? Because like a lot of times on the court, you say something to me. It ain't like really, talking. yeah. Um, no, no. Call like, you, you remember the Staples Center. I know you. Like if you kept talking, I ain't even taking a shower. I'm going straight to the back. Right. Mm. So, so like as a, as a rapper, how do you, okay, he says something, I'm going to say something back without going overboard. I mean, first of all, you have to have an understanding for who's speaking. You know what I mean? A lot of people speaking because all they can do is speak. You know what I mean? If I know when I see you, it ain't gonna be no action. Then majority of the time, now, now wait a minute, you're asking me today how I handle it. The evolved, mature. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you're right. asking me today how I handle it. It's a far cry from asking me years ago how I would handle it. Um, but right now, man, I really don't pay much attention because it's people, they talk so much to where it, it has no merit. If I'm true, if I truly feel threatened by what you're saying, then of course I'm I'm going to make sure that I it's gonna be met with equal, you know, opposition. You know what I mean? I'm going it's gonna just really kill an ant with a sledgehammer at that point. However, most it it ain't worth the trouble. My favorite clip from you past year was yeah, like, ain't nothing going down, ain't no water, things, ain't no beer, he ain't no going to the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> nah, he wouldn't stood on some I had no, no idea that I was being filmed at the time. No, no, but the funniest part is you went from 10 to 2, like, so, so, you know, after you go from 2, where you from, bro? You, you, you from Atlanta? Well, if you from Atlanta, then you already know, yeah. bro, I was <laughs> crying in the car. How do you even hear about that, though? Like, you have people, I'm sure, that... People send it to me. They, they send it to you just yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just seen, I seen the fly, and I knew. And then uh, kind of have a familiarity. We ran, we ran around the city, um, and uh, we kind of know who, you know, yeah. who who promotes where, and, you know, so I just pull up. and but But I will say, for that particular situation, they did the right thing, you know what I mean? They came through and and and, and like they were you apologetic. Know. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it, it it was done uh, outside of the the boss's authority, uh, and when he found out about it, he rectified it financially. And you know we you know we turned lemons into lemonade. That's how you pulled up, Shaq. When somebody threw your name on the flyer, you and Unc, how was you doing? How was you handling it? Statue of limitation ain't not bad. <laughs> <laughs> and then the thing is, you know, it was a, it was a, a, a another thing is, so you know, uh, my my manager and, and longtime partner Clay, he he died. Oh yeah, Clay, yeah, that's, yeah. And when stuff like that happened, he would usually be the one that would pull up, and so I was really handling it in a way that I felt that he would approve of. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and so that was kind of emotional for me. Do you remember what you said? No. Oh, cause, because I was going to ask you to reenact it again. I don't, I don't remember. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> you blacked out for a minute. <laughs> I don't remember. He was like, hey, ain't going to be no steaks, ain't going to be no soda, no. ain't going to be no <laughs> beer. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> hey, Killer Mike just won the Grammys. And obviously being from the A, like how, how gratifying is it for you to see how far you guys are taking things? Man, I'm extremely proud of Killer. I'm extremely happy. I was, I was elated until the moment was ruined by by them di disrespecting him and, and arresting him um, for nothing. You know what I mean? You know, I just, I just, I'm, I'm beyond like, just. He got out right away though, cause I called him like 30 times. And yeah, he, he did. He got out right away. He did, yeah. he got out some hours, yeah, some hours, but the thing you said is. You it's the moment to do that, right? Man, they didn't even have to, 
take it there. Right. They didn't even have to take it there. Once you find that this is a person who just won three Grammys and they're going to do their interview, like the, the proper thing to do is, you know, oh, excuse me, I was mistaken. Go right ahead. You don't continue on. Like, it just be too much ego. When you put people in positions of authority, like policemen, security, and stuff like that, they need to go through a certain level of, for one, emotional evaluation. So you could see if they are, you know, fit for that position. Because it do something to a person, you know what I mean? Make them feel mo like more than they, than they are. Like they have more rights, you know, over people than they do. Have you ever seen the Stanford Experiment? Yes. I ain't seen that. Uh, in the 70s, there was a professor at Stanford University. And he put ads out in the paper uh, for volunteers, I think he might have paid them some hundred dollars or some a piece, and he split the the volunteers. He split them into two groups, and he transformed a hallway in Stanford University into a cell block, and the two groups was divided into prisoners and officers, and it was supposed to last for a week. All right, the prisoners they were being treated like so badly by the ones who were the officers, they forgot it was an experiment. Like right. the, the, it, it immediately went to the officers' heads. You know what I mean? They start saying stuff like, well, you should have thought about that before you got here. Like, man, this is, a, this is an experiment. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's just something that that kind of eminent power does to the psyche of a human, that it should be studied, and it should be, you know, it should be considered when you putting people in positions of authority like that because everybody ain't ready for that. That's real. That's real. Who's one artist passed away you wish you could have worked with? Man, Tupac, Michael Jackson, Prince, uh, Marvin Gaye, Biggie. Biggie. Yeah. Shaq, you work with Big? You tell him about it. You know my Big story? Mm-mm. So Big, me and Big. You heard it, you can't stop the rain? Yes. So, my manager, Frank, mm -hmm. was friends were big, and, he, and Frank was similar to Clay, Hustler. Mm. So he was saying, hey, I, I got big to come down. So they, they sent me the track. I had the studio at my house. So mm -hmm. again, you know, like we- In Orlando? Yeah, in Orlando. Yeah, so okay. again, like we, I'm trying to impress y'all. <laughs> I gotta be tight. That's they ain't right. gonna be on the same level as big, but it can't be whack. Right. Gotta, so I'm writing. Like, do it again. I redid it about 20 times. So now a big coming down. So I'll play it. And I'm just like, please don't say my <laughs> whack. Cause it, if he said whack, he gonna leave. I'm it's done. over. So me and Kenny in the studio and Big start going like this. So I'm like, oh, he's like, Big Dog, that's tight. So now I'm good. So I'm saying, okay, I'm sure. like, Big, you sure you like us? I'll, he's you he's straight now. Yeah, I'll, I'll change it now, man. Tight. So then I gave him a pen and a pad. I said, here you go. He said, I don't need that. <laughs> play it one more time. And we played it one more time. And he went in that one take and killed it. Damn. But it was vulgar. So I had to press the button. I was like, because you know, I'm, I was still on that road. My, I was like, big. Oh, you're right, kid. The kids, the kids. And then he did the other room. But one you know, take. One take. He did that and did the doubles and like a, another take. Damn. Bro, then we. In the house, you know, he talked to me about, you know, family and money and endorsement deals, and we go on the sea do it. Him and uh, little C's get on the sea do. Big can't swim, so, <laughs> all over. And he about to dry out the big kitty, and we out there trying to save him. But he was a good brother. And Man. the night before he passed, he was on Sunset. Me and Uncle Jerome was riding on Sunset. Remember that tattoo part on Sunset? Yep. He was on that one. So. Mm. Was outside, ah, da, 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 da. so me and Jerome. Right, right, by the comedy store? Yeah, yeah right, yeah, right, yeah, right yeah, that yeah, one. Yeah. So, outside, ah, da, da. so me and Jerome, move. We go in there like, big, what's up, man? I got a party tomorrow. He's like, all right, man, be careful, love you. And that was the last time I saw him, but he was hey. always. You know what, I'm gonna ask somebody else on that list, DMX. X. Oh, yeah. You know, um, that would've been crazy. Man, yeah, that would've listen, been crazy. I have, uh, so a crazy story, right? Um, X came to my house like two weeks before he died. So we were posted, like we were, we were planning to work together. And um, 
he had came to the studio and I was recording something else. And I think by the time I was finished, he had to run to another uh, engagement. Uh, and then one time they said he wanted to go to the studio, but I was at the house with the kids and I couldn't, I couldn't get out. So he said, I'm going to just pull up on you, man. I'm going to just come with you. I said, all right, bet. Man, he came by and we just sat up all night, man, probably about four, five in the morning, talking loud in the kitchen. Uh, I, I was having margaritas, uh, you know what I'm saying? I think he might have had a beer, uh, smoking and just, just chilling and talking like we known each other forever. That was the first time we had ever really... Kicked it like that. It, I mean, and it was like, and he told me, he said, man, I should have, I, I, I always put you, yo, but, 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 but you, you know, you know, I had to, yo, you, yo, you, I, I, you know, I. You competition. I to, yeah, yeah, he was like, yeah. I, I couldn't, you know, I had to let you know, you know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> I couldn't, you know yeah. what I mean? He was like, but I with you, though, I with you. And um, we were talking about kids and I, and, and, and he, he left town that day. And I left town, I was taking my kids to uh, Orlando, matter of fact. And we was on the phone planning, you know what I'm saying, to meet back up and work again. Yeah. And I think maybe like two, three days later, he had passed. You been in the studio with somebody where you was like, man, I heard I got to redo my Yes. I got, who, <laughs> who was it? Young Dro. Dro? Yes. Dro? What, what song, what cut was it? All the time. All, All the, the damn time. Dro is just, he's, he's, he's Dro. Nice. So he keep you sharp. Yeah, yeah, Dro. What about outside your click? Okay, um, let's see here. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Bun B. Ooh, Bun B. Okay, so did, did, did somebody tell you or did you hear me? Yeah, nah, me, me, me. I'm yeah. always the one yeah, that, right. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know, I know. So when you heard Drake 3000 on, yeah. on Saw, you already knew. Mm -hmm. Well, see, the thing is, I was already expecting that. You know what I'm saying? He, pulled, he couldn't have did what he did, though. I, I mean, but the thing is, right, so when you work with Drake, I already had my verses, you know what I mean? And I gave it to him. And so the, the three people who have taken the longest to complete a verse <laughs> in, in, in history, in my, in my, my career, is, is Andre 3000, Eminem, uh, and, and Nipsey Hussle. Nip took a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's real. He real meticulous. You know what I'm saying? Like he, man, we fell asleep. We fell asleep, man. You know what I'm saying? Waiting on, on the, then we woke. We both. <laughs> we <laughs> we woke up. We were like, man, I catch up with you later, man. We will finish this later. Uh, but but you know we but we'll be up talking and like you know changing philosophies on business and family and you know what I'm saying real estate all kinds of exchanging like books to read like we'll just. Conversation we had was was, I guess you know uh, you wouldn't expect two rappers to be talking. Yeah, like that. You know what I mean? Thinking like that. If people were thinking about Tip and and Nipsey in a conversation, they wouldn't be thinking the types of things we. You know what I'm saying? We're talking mm -hmm. about portals and uh, Antarctica and Damn. you know what I'm saying? Like all kinds of different dimensions and you know just just different types. Um. That was a that was a, a that was a real enlightening relationship, you know. When you when you can get around somebody right. and learn something, mm -hmm. and 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 offer something for someone else to learn, that's you know that's that's steel sharp and the steel at that point. Speaking of real estate, you're doing a lot in Atlanta. Where, where'd you get that business acumen from? My uncles, my uncles. Uh, I got into real estate really. My uncle when he got out of prison, I just happened to be getting my my first. Uh, my first uh, check, you know, my signing bonus. And he just had me for 20000 40000 I forget how much it was. And so I gave it to him, reluctantly, but I gave it to him. And um, he, he, he started buying houses, and we been we started flipping houses. We did over 100 houses, Damn. 2000 to 2008. Um, and then after that, when the market crashed, I, I, I noticed – when I got out, of, when I got back out of prison, that the, the, the uh, commercial real estate it didn't it didn't suffer, you know what I mean? Um, Multifamilies, uh, you know, mixed use they 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 you know they they continue to thrive. So I, I I got out of residential and started doing commercial. 
Damn. So what have you seen and learned from him? Because obviously both of y'all mean so much more than, than sport and rap, mm. right? And acting for both of y'all. What have you seen? What, have, what page have you taken out of his book as far as the business of Cuba? What he stands for? Man, to be honest with you, uh, to to not spend as much. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, when I see Shaq, you know, he he's always like you can ball with your businesses. Yeah. You ain't always got to ball with your watch. You ain't got to ball with your chain. You can ball by buying a building. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, like, you know, like he was talking to me about we we uh were gambling at that that uh at that car wash, you know. He, what he didn't mention is about, about, about three weeks later, he bought the building <laughs> two doors <laughs> He sure down. didn't mention that. You know what I'm saying? He bought the building two doors down. And you know what I'm saying? And that was, I was like, oh, okay, dope. And you know, at, I think that's, the, that's, that's, that's what it takes for us in our community, yeah. you know, for, to lead by example. You know what I mean? Of course, anybody can pull up in a Lamborghini. Anybody can pull up in a Rolls Royce. Anybody can have those type of depreciating assets. Sure. You know what I'm saying? They're going to be here. They, go, they, 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 they quick to come, hard to keep. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. So for people to, 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 to be able to see someone that looks like them, still cool, still, you know what I'm saying? They ain't got to be stiff and, and lame and right. nerdy but still of the culture and, and, and acquiring businesses. You know what I'm saying? When he acquired Papa John's, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. that's, to me, you know what I mean? That's what I see as evolution. That's, that's, what, that's the business acumen I hope to achieve. And what I learned from you is continue to grow. That's real. You know, people try to talk about your, your usage of your big vocabulary, but <laughs> me and you are similar. We don't want right. to be looked at as here. Right. We want you to see our growth. So I, I love you. I always respect you. You ever need anything from me, you can holler. Tell King. <laughs> <laughs> tell King that, you know, he's still my favorite. You know, he still owed me some money when he came in TNT and took all that money. And, and, uh, give the yeah. little princess a, a hug and a kiss for him and tell her Uncle Shaq to hello. And right on. I know you came a long way, and I appreciate you. If you ever need anything from me, and I would love to get sixteen on that new album, I would not. Man, let come you on, know. man, just pull up, pull up, yeah. man. Will, man, yeah. if he get on the album, can he get on the comedy spot? Of course. Yeah, yeah hey man, let's yeah, do that. Yeah, sure, hey man, yeah, I love I, it. You know, Howard, have you ever bombed? Uh, I got booed. No, no, but like, have you ever bombed? Like, like people say, Jack, you're funny, do comedy. My fear is, because I'm a fan, if them first three jokes don't hit, it's going to be well, a long time. Well, well, you're going to you're going to have to, you got to get past that. Right. Because that's going to happen. You think so? I know so. I know so. Because it's, it's a part of the art. You know what I mean? It's a part of the art. You got to, you have to learn what works by finding out what doesn't work. Right. You, mean, right. you know what I mean? It's trial and error. And it ain't no other way to find out except getting your ass up on stage. And you got to be fearless enough to, to, to go out there and try that, say something outrageous, and sometimes it go over people's head, or sometimes it didn't land, the timing wasn't right, and that's how you learn. Same thing you're going through in comedy, I had to go through the same thing in, in rap. <laughs> I, I mean, like when I first had wanted to do an album, I remember you and Foo Snickers. Yeah. I remember Shaq Foo. Can you rock? Remember Shaq Foo? Yeah, <laughs> I remember Shaq Foo. You know what I'm saying? I spent a lot of time in, in, in New York over the summers, you know what I'm saying? From the time I was probably five to 15. Shout out to Chip Foo. Your dad was out there, right? Yeah, my pops lived yeah, in New York. Yeah. So I remember, you know what I'm saying? You rocking. You, you know what's crazy? I never wanted to be a rapper. So. What made you do it? So I did the Arsenio Hall show. Mm. And I'm like you, I, I, I want to be different. So. Right. I don't want to just come in on a $3,000 suit and talk. So I said, hey, let me rap in my favorite rap group, which was Fru Snickers at the time. So they sent me the song, What's Up, Doc? So I did it. Mm. And then my agent came and said, hey, man, you, you're not going to believe this. I said, what? Jive want to give you $10 million for three hours. I'm not, what? <laughs> I don't turn on that money. So I said, you know what? So first, then I said. $10 for three hours? Yeah, that's, for three hours. Cra- that's, that's a crazy yeah, that's deal crazy. back then, yeah. bro. Even back so then. then I said, you know what? I'm not a rapper. And then I said, you know what? Now I had to convert back to being a kid. I want to. I want to rap with all my favorite rappers. That's right. The only way I do it if I can rap with all my favorite rappers. Right. So, you know, you talk about all these. You know, the discography. I think for celebrity, I have the biggest di- di- disc discography ever. 
I'm yeah. glad that what you were finna say. I'm yeah, glad yeah. that what you they, said. They, I'm glad you. Uh, I didn't know where you were going with that, man. You know what I'm saying? I was, yeah, 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 this kind of <laughs> but yeah, but I would, I would, I, I would love to get get on one of your songs. Come on, man, let's do it. That's a switch, dog. Holla, like some some hard. We, yeah. We so so, I yeah, appreciate yeah. you, bro. Get you in there with me and Dro. Uh, hey, I'm, I'm in. <laughs> you gonna throw the lines there? I will not let you know. Are we get another ATL, man. You know what, man? Uh, it had been green lit. Um, it had been green lit, and and we were working on the script. Um, man, what happened was uh, a nip pass, and with nip pass, Lawrence oh, headspace. Uh, she said she just wasn't in a new new headspace. Right. So I feel like you know everybody's just patiently, you know, what I'm saying waiting until uh, you know she, she her consciousness allows her to um, contribute. Right. How's it feel being a grandpa? Cause I, I love it. I have seven. Uh, seven grandkids? No. Seven, oh. seven kids. Oh, you know it's, I you know it's coming too. at some yeah. point. No, I, I, I do, but I, I, I'm not looking to. Like I always tell them, don't bring them around until they get two. <laughs> Why? Uh, I love it. You think man. it's going to age you if you, get, if you become a grandpa? It ain't going to never age me. I'm, I'm, you shocked, dog. I'm, I'm, no, I just, I don't know. No, but, but look, <laughs> okay, so look, no, let me ask you. Know, you know what it is? I, I, I. I don't want no little kid calling me Papa Shaq. Yeah, yeah. Pop, pop. Papa Shaq, what's that? Come here, little. You know, I used to be the best. <laughs> <laughs> Has it changed you at all? I mean, yeah, I do. I do believe it does. It it it, it gives you more patience, more calm, more resolve. You know what I mean? Um, and it, it it just it softens you. You know, some. But my kids, I got seven kids too, and they call me Pops. So for her to call me Pop Pop, it ain't really, right. it ain't that far apart. I don't mind it though, bro. Uh, How old are you? I, if you I don't love mind me 43. I'm 43. Okay, yeah, you're young. 43. Yeah, you're young. Yeah. How old are you? 43. Yeah. Okay then. Oh, you young. 80 baby. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> the best yeah. time. No, no, 70 babies better. Yeah, <laughs> Who, who's your five favorite people that ever played in Atlanta? Any sport? Uh, I'm going to answer that. But while I'm thinking, I want to ask you, since you don't have any grandkids yet, which of your kids do you think will be the first Ooh. to make you a grandpa? I'm going to have to go with Shakir. <laughs> Shakir? Yeah, because they say he's my light-skinned twin. Oh. <laughs> you know what that means, then. Yeah, Miles is a player, Sharif is a player, but yeah, Shakir is probably going to be the first. He's going to be first. And I always tell him, I say, hey, man, when... Go down. Don't call your mama first. You better call me first. I can tell you what to do. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm so if I okay. So to answer that, uh, any sport, I, any sport. Okay, okay. Uh, Dion. Oh yeah, yeah. Prime got to go. Dion. Dominique. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Michael Vick. Yeah. Uh, Damn. Uh, Matumbo. Matumbo made the list. Yeah. Shaq, why you don't like the Matumbo pick? Yeah, man. We, we play in Atlanta? I mean, Atlanta yeah, he, is, he qualified, but I'm saying, why you don't like that Matumbo uh, pick? Let me think. Uh, Might as well say Dwight Howard next, then. Go on. Damn. He, play, he played in Atlanta? <laughs> yeah, did, did he? Did he Matumbo. play in Atlanta? Let me see here. This uh, is five. I mean, Matumbo, Matumbo took us farther than, oh, Josh Smith. Oh, yeah, Josh. There you go, Josh Smith. Yeah. Why you don't like that list? You like the list, you don't like the Matumbo pick? What's wrong with Matumbo? I like him, but it's like a new rapper coming in and saying T.I. is not a great rapper. Don't disrespect me. Wait a minute, Matumbo, you ain't saying something? Atlanta. Matumbo no, has no, something to say no, about no, you? No, hold on. During the finals, I'm not even thinking about Matumbo. I'm thinking about AI. Uncle Jerome comes in and say, yo, man, Matumbo said he don't, he's defensive player of the year. He don't need no double team. So I'm eating my brats of flesh. I say, Rome, he ain't said that. Uncle Rome had that. Because see, Uncle Rome knew what he was doing. Of course he did. Don't disrespect me by saying you're going to play me one-on-one. -on -one. I take that as a sign of disrespect. So I'm looking at the paper. I am the defensive player of the year. I can play Shaq one-on-one. -on -one. Huh? Yeah, so. <laughs> so, look, so look, I don't but need no idea, double team. Nah, nah. But competitiveness it's comes great. with the sport. Yeah. yeah, but it's a sign of disrespect. That's like any new rapper coming and saying, hey, that's T.I. did all Well, right. they pulled to believe nah, that until nah, I show nah. them different. Nope. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. I get it. And the first play of the game, I look. Double ain't coming. I said, okay. I want to see knock his teeth out of here. So, you know, I tried to spin. I tried to, yeah, I like so. He cool, but I just don't, you know. 
Man, that's a great five, man. man. Don't, don't listen. Don't take. Don't change Matumbo. Matumbo. I mean, man, Matumbo took us farther. Than, that was that. That team got farther than them. No, 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 Ti. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna flip it on you. You can't put yourself in there, so I'm gonna give you a spot. Uh huh. Five from Atlanta, and that's tough. I know you can man. put Outcast as one if you if need be. Yeah, Outcast got to be number one. No order. Just give me five though. Outcast. Uh, uh, Goody Mob. Uh, How's your family? Thugger. Ooh. Oh yeah. Thug, huh? Um. You might need to go YouTube. ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right, Shaq. Shaq said you can get you ten. You might need to go more. ten. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Uh, so let me see. Cass, Goody Mob, Thug, Future, uh, Savage. Um. Let's see. Oh here. yeah. I um, love him. Savage? Yeah, Savage uh, hard. Uh, uh, he hard, huh? Yeah, he hard. He, I mean, I mean, and unexpected though. You know what I'm saying? He you ain't you ain't expecting him to say a lot of that he be saying. Yeah. You know I mean uh um, he, he hard. I gotta say Damani. I got to. Right. Right. He's probably one of the most overlooked right now. Oh, ain't no uh, doubt it's coming. Uh let's see here. Oh. Man. Kilo Ali. They got me on that. I don't know that. Kilo Ali, man, he's one of the the great like originators. You know, uh, uh, like Atlanta rap kind of started with MC Shadi. Yeah, shake it, shake it, shake it. Kilo know, Ali, you know come on, uh, dog. Sammy Sam, Ghetto Mafia, a damn shame. Yeah, I remember uh, that. I've been coming. I've been coming here since '89, bro. For real? Yeah. 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 That freak Nick is. Yeah. Gold Club. Freak Nick, 112, yeah. Two Chains. Yeah. Chains. Yeah, Chains yeah. hard too, yeah. Yeah. Damn, Atlanta yeah. got so yeah. much. Yeah. All right, man, we know you got to go. I appreciate y'all, you. man. Love and respect. Yeah. Man. Appreciate it. All right. King Thank y'all for having me, man. Thank y'all for having me. Don't you ever come to my house no more. Right on. Corduroy pants. Hey, man, <laughs> when you take off, the, it, it matched with the Kango. <laughs> Matumbo got something to say to you about outside about it too. <laughs> yeah, Matumbo outside. Man. He outside, man. He outside on the court. Uh, what's becoming my favorite part of the podcast, Dr. O'Neill Fan Advice is where you can ask any question to Dr. O'Neill. I would preface it by saying I really like when he answers relationship questions. So let's ask those. If you want to ask him a question, either leave a question in the YouTube comments for the episode or send it via email to askdroneal at gmail.com. Sonia from Dallas asks, before I ask, what do you, what do you think about Sonia already? Dallas, Sonia from Dallas. Dallas has it going on. Something's going on there. BBL. Dallas is crazy. Big cracking. brother listening. My sister's husband keeps hitting on me at family functions when she's not around. Let me say that again. My sister's husband keeps hitting on me when she's not around. He comments on my looks, and even though I can't prove it's him yet, I keep getting flowers at my job from a secret admirer. I'm afraid that if I tell my sister she won't believe me and may stop speaking to me, what should I do? Just to sum it up, sister's husband hitting on her at family functions, getting secret admirer flowers, afraid to go to the sister because she might say, I don't believe you, you're just jealous. What should she do? It's two sides. First side, you gotta stop it in his tracks. So. Hey, yeah. this is inappropriate. No, no, yes, but it's, it's, it's uh, three things you have to do. One, stop it, it's inappropriate. That's the warning. Second time, record it. Third time, when so you like go to your sister, set up a ring camera. No, don't set up ring. Just you know what? Just like save it and you know, do, do, just do like a you know little yeah. thing. Now, when you go to the sister and tell her, and she don't say nothing, now you can show her. Mm. However, what that's going to do is going to break up a happy home. It's going to break up a lot so, of things. Yeah. So hopefully, when one, when you do the first thing, you stop it in the butt. You got to be aggressive. Mm. Hey, I ain't with all that. That's my sister. I don't play that. Well, it sounds like she's next been letting this go this. on for a long time. Yeah. No, so she'd probably be like, next time you do this, I'm going to tell her, boom, 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 or have her boyfriend say something. If she has one. Right. What would you say to the guy? Uh, you're messing around in dangerous waters. That's, that's, that's a no-no. That's a, that's a big no-no. 
Yeah, the way that when I read this from Sonia, I think Sonia has to ask herself a question. Are you enjoying being hit on? And I'm not putting the blame on the victim. Actually, you are. No, that's not what I'm doing. Actually, you are, Dr. Because Adam. I agree with you is it comes down to in the beginning did she say what the hell are you doing yeah but again she don't want to tell her sister because her sister might get mad totally so get and then cause family friction there so when she tries to stop it at the bud she needs to be aggressive and you know kind of like hey next time you do it i'm gonna tell her mm. but again if she and tell her that like yeah, drake exactly <laughs> That's an easy way to get a snake out of the grass, <laughs> is to record it like Drake. Can I, can I do something right now? So yeah. my guy, Salehi, is here. Yes. He brought, he had five questions that he thought would be funny for me to ask. Can Let's he ask it. them to you? Of course. Go ahead. Okay. Come on, man. This is uh, one of my best friends. This is Salehi Bembry, in my opinion, the best sneaker designer in the world. You don't get your around on our test, look at us. <laughs> <laughs> He has, we oh, went, to, we too went close, to college too together, close. and now he is designing for New Balance and Crocs and Versace, and he rode with me down today, and he said, I do have some questions for Shaq. Let's do it. And I thought they were too good that unlike comedians, I don't want to steal jokes. Okay, do it. So I'm going to let him do it. Okay. All right, it's five questions. All right, let's do it. Was there ever a situation in life where you wanted to be small, perhaps a button you couldn't press or a room you could not enter? Only time I wanted to be small is when I walk by and I see these guys in their little sports cars, like the Ferraris and the Lamborghinis. So, yeah, yeah. so I was the idiot that would buy the sports car knowing I can't fit and then have having to pay an extra 102000 to make it fit. I have a red Ferrari. Here's the picture. I've had a Lamborghini that I stretch. Here's the picture. And I wasted money on it. And then one day I was in my Lamborghini and a guy blew me out in the Hellcat. See, I don't know a lot about cars. Blew me out in the Hellcat Charger. So I went to look at the Hellcat Charger, and I realized I could just move the seat back and fit. So now I don't do sports cars anymore. So I own about nine Hellcats and, you know, Hellcat trucks and all that stuff. So The stretching is <clears throat> moving the seat back? Or is no. it making the whole car? Big? So the uh, Ferraris, I would have to cut the car in half, stretch it, and then mm. do the body work. But with the uh, 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 Hellcats, all I got to do is just move the seat back. So every time I buy a car, I just move the seat back eight to nine inches. Aesthetically, it's pleasing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I hit him with question number two. Yes. You ready? Of course, yeah. All right. Give me some hard questions, man. This is, this is a easy. difficult one. Do you remember when Aunt Viv just up and changed skin color? How did that make you feel? New or old Aunt Viv? Now, first of all, you, you talking about my Aunt Viv? No, no, I'm talking about Fresh Prince. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah, Kenny Mama. Kenny oh, behind you. Shout out to hey. Kenny's mom. No, no. No, we're talking about for Fresh Prince. Okay, Prince. But, Prince. No, but hold on. So we have this, we have this censor family thing that when you disrespect our family. Yeah, you got real serious. No, seriously. So like, so like when you disrespect our family, it's automatic go. It ain't no. So like when you said Aunt Vivi change, I'm like, are you talking about my aunt? <laughs> I don't know you like that, so I Thank apologize. You for Fresh Prince. No, no, Fresh no, Prince seriously, like, <laughs> so, uh, oh, yeah, the Fresh Prince. Mm. Oh, yes. It was the original Aunt Viv. Aunt Viv, and then it switched I, uh, out of nowhere. It did. I was, uh. Did you have a preference for which Aunt Viv? I mean, I don't want to say I, I like the darker one better, because I, okay. I, don't, I don't want That was people, the first one. No, but I, I don't want people to say, but. I like the first one better. Was there ever a place where you got turned up to 10 and you're like, damn, I really shouldn't be turning it up to 10 no. here? Okay. No, because that's the only thing that could make me go from zero to 10. Family. Family. Disrespect my family is on. Is we going to get a crack and then I just deal with the stuff later. And, and, and. JC oh, Penny Tire yes. Section. Thank you, Kenny. True. I don't know what that means, but I'm excited to find out. 19, 1993. We're in JC Penny's. Me. My cousin Kenny. R.I.P. J.C. Penny. And we're walking, and this guy's with his girlfriend, and, and we're getting ready to play the Knicks. And the guy got on this New York Knicks, and he's like, well, Orlando Magic suck. Knicks going to f*** your girl up. And I said, no, I'm going your girl up. And then the dude said, I'm going your mama up. Mm. And, Kenny, and Kenny said, what you say about my aunt? And Kenny started chasing the around <laughs> around J.C. Penny's tire section. <laughs> tire section, the clothes, <laughs> underwear. <laughs> Left his girl. So me and Kenny took her to lunch. No. Yeah. Where did you go? We went we went to uh, no, we went to uh, it was a place called uh, Bahama Breeze. Got some So this guy there. ran away from Kenny in the tire word. section and left his Kenny. girlfriend. True story. Wow. All right, question 3. I like these. When you get a pedicure, how much does it cost? 
I give about a thousand dollars because I know my feet stink. <laughs> I know they're ugly, and I like to paint them. See, I, all, all this stuff that's going on, I paint because it's ugly. I want to look pretty. Stop right there. Okay. All that other job you had, a lot of men. No, no, no. Yeah, but right th- th- that's why I paint my. And then, true story. One time, I had a, I had a toenail that was torn off. And I wasn't going to play in the game. My mom was like, baby, why are you not playing the game? I was like, I tore my toenail off. So she did something, and then she put, like, some red polish on the thing, and I had 40 that game. So I was like, you know, I'm going to just start painting my toenail. So that's why I paint my toenail. All that stuff that all, all these other people got going on, don't put that on me. You do a solid color, or you got, like, designs? I, I do, like, sparkles and designs and all that stuff. <laughs> Word. <Yeah. laughs> you no, know, just to make it look pretty, because I have ugly, stinky feet. Word. Do they compete over doing your feet because you pay a thousand dollars? No, so I you have one I lady. I, well, no, I, so like if I if I feel like I need them done, I'll, I'll go into a place where there ain't nobody in there because I don't want people looking at looking at me going, shocking and getting it. like you see. So I, just, I, I like that he's like, I want people to see my feet, yeah, but I'll yeah. go on TNT <laughs> right. on the desk because I know it's gonna make you laugh. It's a safe, it's safe space. Yeah, yeah, safe space. All right, last two questions. My doctor said I got a bacchiotomy. Name that movie. I'm not sure. Oh, let me do it again. My doctor said I need a bacchiotomy. I don't know. Half baked. Half baked. Okay. All right. And uh, the last black question. People don't watch that. It's time out. What? What? That's a classic. I what? don't watch that. Why not? I've never seen a movie in my life. That's a classic. Well, you got to watch it. You know that. what the okay, premise is? Uh, you know what it's about? Okay, hold on. Since we're going to movie the trivia, what movie is this? Hell no, you can't have my cornbread. You think about taking my cornbread. It's like life. It. Oh, okay, my yeah. bad. Oh, you know what? I forget you as half black. My bad. My bad. Now you know. Uh, what product do you wish was made in your size? For example, a Q-tip. What product do I wish was made in my size? Yeah, do you have to bunch like four Q-tips together? I do always bunch them up anyway. <laughs> the Louis Vuitton shoes. I, I seen a guy one day rocking some Louis shoes with a nice top and I got jealous. Yeah, I remember he wanted some of your shoes, uh-huh. and you were like, he has to order like 50 of them. Yeah, yeah. We we sent you like a Canada Goose jacket back in the day. It was big as but it still didn't fit you. Yeah. yeah. Next so time. those were five questions from yeah. Salehi Bembry. Thank you very much for your time. Many times. Many times. Many times. Always a pleasure. Yeah! My feet stink. I know they're ugly, and I like to paint them.